and welcome to another edition of Orthodox Beliefs and Traditions. I'm Steve Toby. Before we start, let's pray for understanding with Father Gregory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Illumine our hearts, O Master, who lovest mankind with the pure light of thy divine knowledge. Open the eyes of our mind to the understanding of thy gospel teachings. Implant also in us the fear of thy blessed commandments, the trampling down all carnal desires, we may enter upon a spiritual manner of living, both thinking and doing such things as are well-pleasing unto thee. For thou art the illumination of our souls and bodies, O Christ our God, and unto thee we ascribe glory, together with thy Father who is from everlasting, then all holy good and life-creating spirit, both now and ever to ages of ages. Amen. Okay, in another program we discuss the sacraments in the Orthodox Church. If you haven't seen that program, I urge you to take a look at it. I'll put a link to that program in the description section. Today we are going to go into a little bit more depth on baptism, which is one of the sacraments or mysteries of the Orthodox Church. One of the largely forgotten traditions in the Church is that our Paschal Liturgy was really an outgrowth of the Liturgy of Baptism. In the early church, the preparation for baptism took place at the start of Great Lent and culminated with the baptism liturgy and the night before or the morning of Pascha, so the newly baptized Christian could partake of communion on Pascha with the rest of the community of Christians. As you will see, the mystery of baptism is truly a Paschal event. In today's discussion, we are going to need to answer the following questions. What is baptism? Why do we have baptism? What are the effects of baptism? What are the differences between what the Orthodox believe and what other traditions believe? All right, why do we have a baptism? The answer to that is real simple. In our Lord's own words, we have in St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, verse 19, our Lord saying, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. That is why we baptize. Baptism is our Lord's command to us. Okay, what is baptism? Well, baptism is an ancient rite going all the way back into the Old Testament. The Jewish faith practiced a purification rite, which featured full immersion into water when they became defiled in one way or another. An example of this is at Qumran, the ancient Jewish community near where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found, excavations have revealed purification immersion baths. And by the way, our word baptize comes from a Greek word meaning to immerse. Baptism in the, in the Christian tradition started with St. John the Baptist. We can see in St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 11, St. John the Baptist saying, I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So we can see that baptism is a sort of purification. We say for the remission or forgiveness of sins. It is important to stop here for a moment and examine the differences between orthodoxy and other traditions concerning baptism. And there are two main differences, and they are the nature of baptism, that is, what it does to and for us, and we'll discuss this difference a little later on. But now I want to discuss the concept of original sin. Original sin is the Western idea that when Adam and Eve sinned against God, they passed that sin on to all of mankind. In many Western traditions, the belief is that at our birth or conception, we inherited that original sin. That is, we are all born with the stain of original sin on our souls. That is not and never has been the belief of the Orthodox Church. Let's say that again. The Orthodox Church does not believe that we have inherited original sin from Adam and Eve. We are not born with that sin on our souls. What we do believe 
is that we have inherited the effects of Adam and Eve's sin. When Adam and Eve fell from the grace of God through their sin, they brought sickness, death, and sin into the world. So while we bear the effects of their sin, we do not bear their sin. So when we say that baptism is for the remission, that is the forgiveness of sin, we are not talking about the Western concept of original sin. In many of the Western traditions, this original sin can only be done away with through baptism. By the remission of sins, we mean that any sins you may have committed in the past are forgiven. Through baptism, we have died to our old lives and are reborn with a clean slate. We are born again with a new unity with God and church. As Christ was crucified, died, was buried, and resurrected, we too die to our old lives and are resurrected to a new life with him. We are therefore born again Christians through the sacrament of baptism. So when you are asked, are you a born again Christian? With confidence you can say, yes I am. I was born again through the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ and the holy sacrament of baptism. Another difference between some traditions and orthodoxy is that some traditions believe that baptism is only a symbolic act of burial and resurrection. The Orthodox believe strongly that baptism is, is an actual supernatural transformation. We believe that we are actually transformed or changed before God. We experience a real change in ourselves. It is through this mystery or sacrament that we enter into the body of Christ, the Church. We become one with the Church, and through the Church we become one with our Lord Jesus Christ. After baptism, we are able to receive the fullness of Holy Mother the Church. We receive the ability to enter into the sacramental life of the Church as given to us by Christ our Lord. That is why that baptism of a new life in Christ should be celebrated throughout the entire Church. Each new life brought to Christ through baptism strengthens the entire church and its faith and should be a renewal in each of us of our baptismal vows to further strengthen our faith as individuals. But remember, as I said in the program on sacraments, it is important how we approach each sacrament. If baptism, as with other sacraments, is approached with a prayerful, reverent, and committed spirit, then we will receive the full benefits of this great mystery. But if we approach any of the sacraments with anything less than a full commitment and holiness, then their efficacy, that is their effect on us, will be minimal at best. At baptism we accept a very grave commitment to Christ and the Church. If we fail in our commitment to Christ, our spiritual lives are in serious jeopardy. If we are baptized as infants, then that commitment falls to our parents and godparents and the church as a whole. Father Alexander Schmemann, priest, teacher, and theologian of blessed memory, points out in his book on baptism of water and the spirit that baptism has fallen away from the concept that baptism is a blessed event for the entire church and the liturgy of baptism should be attended by the full congregation. Today, baptism is seen by many as an event for family and friends. It's truly shameful that we have lost or are losing this tradition that each baptism is an event for all the faithful in Christ. There is so much more that can be said and studied about this wondrous mystery. It's taken up volumes of work by our best theologians. What I have given here only touches on what has been written. A good place to go for more information is the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese in America website and do a search for baptism. Or buy this book. It's a great little book. By Father Alexander Schmemann of Water and the Spirit. Well, in a response to a request, I'll be doing a program on chrismation or confirmation very shortly. Again, if you have any requests for programming or questions, please let me know. And may God bless us all. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.